Hello and welcome to Pillars of Eternity. So, Heather, you have something to say, mate? The dozens. Pretty sure you won't find one among them who stood within a hundred miles of that bridge when the Godhammer went off. Too bad, too. Then there'd be less of them. And what exactly do you have against the dozens? Oh, nothing serious. Nothing I don't have against all folks, anyway. The dozens, they like to take things into their own hands. Get ugly sometimes. We don't have them in the Gilded Vale, but they'd be right at home there. They picked the name so they could do what they wanted and feel like it was the right thing to do. Got nothing to do with honor or sacrifice. They like to invoke Margan too. When they especially went to feel right, somehow I don't think she'd be too impressed with them lot. I'm sure she'd like to set them on fire any time they use her name, but the god probably got rules against that kind of thing. People hide behind symbols so they won't be questioned. The Duke's a responsible man. Maybe while we are in the Fiend's Bay we can get him to force people to call themselves what they are. Don't imagine they'd have as many members if they called themselves the Loudmouth Shipfuckers. But why do they call themselves the Dozens? Do you know that? I actually know that. Most well, Dawoodian stood outside Haugen's city there, waiting for the Weird Wind to cross the bridge there. They had to hold him long enough for the Godhammer to detonate. Hm. So they did what they had to. The Godhammer. That, that, that's what they called the bomb they blew up Wilden with. Don't know much about it other than that. Anything kills a living god. Yes, you gotta give it the name, right? Right. Adventuring supplies. You need them. I have them. Care to see my selection? Of course I do. What do you actually have? Oh my! That's a lot of garbage! Poisonous cloud. That's it. And that's why I don't like traps in this game. I'm actually not sure how to use them. Okay. Let's sell everything we don't need. From low to high. That's a lot of Serp Spears. And a lot of Serp Shields. Okay, just a sec. This is going to take a while. Okay. Maybe. Cats and hoots and a cape. Definitely won't need that. A breastplate. That's mini mom. Gonna keep one of you. Gonna sell that. We're never gonna use it anyway. Whatever. A fine hide armor.
Oh, I also have a dragon. How much do you want for it? 20. Ah, huh, shell. Why, why wouldn't I sell a dragon for 20 gold? Hey, Laura. Gods keep you. Take your time, traveler. If you're looking for enchanted scrolls to grab, you've come to the right place. Sure, let's see what you have. Requires lore level 10. Do you have that kind of lore? How much is your lore? Can't see. Missile Barrage. This dusty scroll describes a spell with which the caster can send whipping array of fiery projectiles after a single target. Cool. Fast casting area of effect 1 point something meters. Interruption. Weaker. Okay. I might actually purchase some spells at some point. Ring of Protection. That's a pretty decent Ring of Protection. That's two artifacts we might use. Two plus second level spell uses. Uh, fourth level spell uses. Thousand. Seal of the Fate. Okay. Kind of weird I can't actually move it. Thank you. Don't know what it is about. No, whatever. This thick iron band is detained uh, and scratched and appears to have seen much use. It is subdued with elven small bands, one for each of the gods. It was created by Adrian Priest to remind him of his devotion, particularly in the heart of battle. It is said that the feeling his fingers rub against the beds he would say a quick prayer to each of the gods who blessed him in return. Well, that's nice. An elven wizard of Adia, Telda, was forever frustrated by the limits of her own considerable power. After spending almost two centuries mastering most of the spells known to Kith, she found that her greatest challenge lay not with her repertories, but with her inability to make more frequent use of magic. She spent the last century of her life studying the means to amplify her abilities. When at last she developed a spell she needed, she had it built into a ring so that she uh, so that the prudent wizard need not cast a spell to make use of it. Expensive stuff, by the way. Ooh. Okay, that's something good. This merchant might be very useful to me. Just a seer, an armor. Hey, traveler. Well, my traveler, you interested in purchasing any rations for your journey? Ooh, dragon. At one point, I might purchase it, but for now, no. By the way, greetings. Where did you get that? Camp and supplies, we have enough of those. Hude and Lankio Great Storm. Ingram, come on, speak with him. Greetings. Come take a look. You won't find a finer collection of armor and weaponry in Defiance Bay. Outside Sonnyville's, of course. And what's so special about Sonnyville? She operates in the expedition hall, sells the best equipment in the city, but one keeps her on short leash, keeps her fine inventory received for created expeditionaries, members of the dozens, and anyone else he takes the liking to. Okay, what do you have to sell? Is that a hunting bow, by the way? It's a war bow. An artifact, in fact. Pike's Pride. Stun duration, knockdown duration goes down. The Druid's Demon. Intellect plus two. Three thousand for that. That's kind of ironic. 
it's not it's not different from what you're wearing right now. Four hundred and ten to sell. Huh. What about the plate armor? Might purchase something like that for a deer. Actually, he's wearing that dust, isn't he? Anyway, let's take a look at the unique weapons first. The shutter. Blunderbuss. I can purchase a pistol. The aqua bus and the blunder bus. Blunder buses are Maclock web fire weapons used for hunting or in combat against groups of enemies. They can inflict an impressive amount of damage but fare poorly against the armor. Despite this, like other firearms, blunder buses are capable of penetrating a wizard's arcane veil. Sure, I'll find a weapon like that somewhere, at some point. Okay, let's take a look at this war bow. 12 meters, interrupt. Okay, it's a fine weapon, so it has accuracy bonus and 15% damage. The Dwarven Clan of Langmire dwell in the wilds of Nasutak, hunting game and surviving off the harsh land. Summers were brief and winters difficult, but the winter of 2562 was one of the hardest in the tribe's long history. A mighty snow leopard had established territory nearby, scaring off much of the game near the village. By fun towns, hunters were returning with little more than rabbits, and the winter freeze was nigh. A dozen of the best hunters stuck out across the tundra, determined to hurt the great hat. The beast was craftier than they'd planned, and by Iniverno, half of the hunter and hunters and most of their hunting foxes had been slain without so much as a wounding the leopard. Despite the furious, one of the hunters crafted a bow from the bones of her slain foxes. As her remaining companions looked on, it seems that all of her rage was channeled into the weapon while she carved and shaped it. Her work completed, she set off and tricked the beast of its lair. Once she'd killed it, she decorated her bow with its teeth as a reminder of the deed and the long and tragic hunt. Now, black, the un black with age and use, this bow is nevertheless fierce to behold. It stood out with the teeth of a large cat and the notches curved in a tight spurs. The lady's hand. Funny. This slender steel scepter is toppled with a gilded feminine hand, each finger ending in the simple mother of pearl nail. It was forged and crafted by a smith and artisan of Delwyn, a small town in the foothill of the Magyar Mountains. In the southern reach of the Adir Empire, the recipient was Lady Ariga Admawa, third Magrapha of Magathon who had recently emerged victorious from a brutal campaign against her march by the barbarians and agents of a rival family. In the leading of a defense of a march, Lady Riga had lost her left hand. The Emperor had the scepter crafted to reward her sacrifice during the protection of what was then the Empire's southernmost territory. Unfortunately for the Adwan family, they only held the Magthon territories for two more generations, with little more and with little money and no land, the family set out to the younger colonies of Dyerwood. The lady's hand saw renewed use in battle by Brannan Adawan, Thine of the Willow Meadows, during the War of Black Trees. There, Brannan used to defeat the Grand Fund warriors and spirit animated trees that were... Okay. that were marching out of the deep woods. For his service to the colonies, Barnum was made an Earl of a new territory of Blackstand, but had bad luck struck with Adwan family twice. Only a year after establishing a fort on the frontier, Barnum was ambushed by Glampatian resistance fighters, finishing their main mission. 
the assassins then pursued his small family and killed every member, leaving no heirs to the house of other one. Following the enforcement of Blackstone's Ford by its new Earl, the Adwillian family belongings were distributed according to the known wishes of the Baroner. Notably, the lady's hand, his great-great-grandmother's gift from the Emperor, was banqueted to Sir Ragger Carfath, a minor knight in New Helmer, alongside whom Barnum had fought in the War of Black Trees. More comfortable with the sword and shield and a scepter, the Grand Lord Sir Haggard displayed his friend's gift prominently in his home, but it never saw use in battle. And I guess he sold it at some point. Lost Tian's Reach I don't know what that was about. Lost Tian's Reach was once wielded by the Theon Stolomar Cinderhold, or the Grasp while engaging a skirmish against the Glamfatian rebels at the outskirts of New Halmar. Solmar cornered the leader at the edge of a cliff. The rebel quickly imposed themselves between Tarn and Solmar and their leader, seeking to prevent Solmar from striking the final bow. As killed pikemen, Solmar was able to foul every effort to strike him, and he ultimately dealt the rebel leader's mortal wound. Unfortunately, the pike's hook blade became snagged upon the dying elf's armor, pulling Solmar over the edge of the cliff with his foe. And that's why spears are designed to break off the edge. Idiot. And Shatterstar. That sounds cool. All around Elra tales circulate about a fabulous weapon fashioned by some stones that fell from the heavens. Once believed to be gifts from the god and still often seen as such, these stones are now known to be meteoroids. Even so, items crafted from them remain precious. Shatterstar was a hammer forged from a solid block of palestine that was discovered by one of the Etiotians faithful shortly after St. Wildwins rose to power in Red Cairns. It was crafted into a weapon and carried at the head of the Red Crean army during the Wildwins' march to the Dialwood. As such, it was believed to lost the Godhammer's citadel. The head of the hammer is iron and nickel, laced with yellow and orange crystals. Its head is placed by bronze hands, joined softly, jiggling rings. Okay? Let's have those things. Should I purchase a weapon? I, I did want a pistol. I can trade my crossbow for that, by the way, so let's take a look at it. It's a fine crossbow. So, if it was up to me and I had all the money in the world, I'd purchase every single one of those artifacts. Let's see what lies this way. The shields have been battered and scattered in a long age battle. Keeping an eye out. Marks. Admin's den. Hm, sure it is. Not a sound. Milk? Cool. Oh, by the way, this sword, we don't need it. The foods we might craft later. Should we read about this, guys? I mean, he's wearing a cool hat. You see a small band of people walking down a rodent road, surrounded by thick forests. This man walks alongside them, chatting and joking like they were lifelong friends. Though the, his appearance is one of fairly, his jovial facade is betrayed by the occasional sideways glance into the dense tree line. There is a noise from the trees around them, the sound of someone breaking a twig. The man holds up his hand, silencing the travelers and destroying the light-hearted tone of the evening. 
They look around, worried expressions stood on their faces, gathering closer together. The man motions to the group to stay where they are and head into the trees. There is a silence for several seconds as they all strain to hear anything, clutching one another nervously. There is another rustling, this time coming from the direction of the man entered the wood. A single figure emerges from the tree line, and the group viable reflexes seeing him approach. The figure comes close enough for the group to see his face, and one of them lets out a cry of dismay, when they realize this is not their friend. No sooner has the sound left his mouth than another group emerged from the woods, weapons drawn surrounding the travelers. As none of them are armed in any state to fight, they are quickly subdued, bound and relieved of their vulnerables. With a laugh the bandits disappear back into the woods, leaving the quarry on the road safely back inside the forest. They meet up with the man. He smiles mocking the, gu the gullible people who will trust a complete stranger as long as he buys them drinks. He takes his share of the spoils and leaves. Wow! You're a horrible person. Well, since the law hasn't nice about to get you, quiet. I'm not gonna bother to. Right, we're looking for secrets anywhere. I shall be discreet. Refugees. I was hoping there would be enemies to clear out. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. Anyway, let's visit the tower. Perhaps there's gonna be something in there. Someone to offer us some quests, something to earn a little bit of money. We're all about the money. Outcome will appear in the companion's portrait. Yes, surely it will. Keeping an eye out. An actress. Ooh, free drinks, and by that I mean I'm gonna sell them. Welcome to the Goose and Fox. Just a moment, thank you very much. Bishop. Ah, never winter night too. Slow and silent. Bardran's ring. This simple wooden ring is orange and grey, and it glows when you are not wearing it. Ring's actual history is more spectacular than fact. Speculation, I'm sorry. While well, all sources agree it was owned by Aaron de Levy and that he acquired it after a period of his exile, stories differ on the particular of how he got it. Some say it was a gift from one of the gods, and others say it was boon of a pact he made with a wicked. Yo, hello. You can keep that if you want. Just move around and steal everything you can. A merchant, you say? Painting the pig's glum fant ruins and the calves bear the rock burst rocks of a talented armorer. Eyebrows well. 2665. Let's see what lies this way. A dwarf and an orlo debate. Philosophy on the other side of this curtain. Okay. Kenra. A woman sits by herself, spinning something in the table in front of her and watching it with furious intensity. It's about the size of a coin. It whittles over the crack in the wood with a metallic rattle. She snatched it up with one hand and slammed half-empty cup down the table with the other. This is not good, she said.
You look like you could use another drink. I'll get there. She took a long drink from a glass. I thought it's a bug, anyway. Just trying to calm down and trying to talk myself out of something foolish. <laughs> and what is so foolish you want to talk yourself out of? She said nothing at first, as if hoping I'll leave. At last, she looked up at me, and lamplight fell across her face. A purpling bruise is, was blossoming along her cheekbones. There is something I need to give my fiancé, Persic, only he doesn't seem to go anywhere without his new friends, and they are not exactly pleasant company. Who hit you? She shook her head. I know how this looks, but you don't understand. It's not like Persic, it's these new friends of his. They've brought out the worst in him. Indeed, tell me more about these new friends of his. They come into our house with their dead eyes and their black feet. I'm not a fool, I know what it means. Persic makes me leave when they show up. But it's obvious what they come to do. Last time they came, I told them to get out. Let them have their fun somewhere else, in the gift, but not under my roof. She's cold and the winces, her fingerprints gently proning her bruise. Sveth changed you, I guess. The Persic I knew wouldn't have crushed a spider. I never thought he'd... She trailed off, still, filling the swallow of discovered flesh. I thought Surf just made people lay low without doing much. I don't really know. Seems better than believing he's always been this way. Maybe I should talk to him. Her hand rests on the table. She clenched into the white knuckled fist. There is nothing more to say to him. We're finished. I just want to give him back this and leave a clean break. She opened her hand. The ring clattered onto the table. It was his grandmother's. Even after this, I don't have the heart to sell it all. But if I go back there myself, I know what will happen. I'll lose my temper. I'll probably wind up with another one of these. She pointed to her bruises. Hm. I'll take this ring then. The house is just north of here. Just please, don't hurt him. As furious as I am, I don't want... Hm. That on my conscience. Okay. Don't worry, if I hurt him, it won't be on you, your conscience. The thing is, I don't mind if I'm a messenger, but if he wants me to say something to her, Lena. he should bloody man up and do it himself. Scattered among such titles, the flora of the living lands, unity and austerity, history of dead fire, archipelago, and treaties on the Kokik people are half a dozen travel journeys held together with twin. Cool. Okay. The Orland woman nods at you, a cup of wine in her hand, scapped her across her lips. Hello. A Orland man relaxed his feet, propped on the table, packed of dark brown skin pick out from the underfold man of blue-green hair, he and the Orland woman with him exchanged laughs and commands with the trio at the nearby table, and he spent a dagger in his hand. His hazel eyes watched me. You look like you've seen night or two in the wilds, joining us for a drink. Who are you? The name's Teuton, Waxlow. The lady next to me is Kay. We've had our fun with the expeditions, but we were hoping to enjoy a little peace and quiet for the next week, anyway. Man at the next table nodded at you. I am Dredge not Snipnus. This is hardly an Elfa. We were part of a, uh, a separate expedition teams, but we both suffered losses and decided to band together. Beasts, barbarians. Beowix is a dangerous time to be an adventurer, but a uh, prosperous one too. And here's too many more precious journeys. Is there anything you'd want? No, thank you.
I'll see what I can find. I'm here. Mine. I'm on the trail. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Okay, guys, let's move out. Just do everything that's not nailed down, okay? Ah, some books, maybe. The most unfortunate tale of Flavia and Barrett. A valiant tragedy. Okay, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna read it later. Ooh, nice. I'm here. Okay then. Red Shot died on. What a funny name. Cyphers use focus. Yeah. Okay, dude. Bishop. Hail and well met. A man behind the bar is nearly the size of an Amor. A handle produced uh, protruders from his back as his face is set in a static flown. He gave me a small nod. He have a drink? There's a tiny powder cup in front of him. He turns it on the board to band, but doesn't drink from it. This is a lovely place. It was founded in the early days of Daewoodian independence by the traveling scholar named Errol of Levy. He wanted a peace where kids of all backgrounds could gather and hash out issues facing their new country. It didn't take long for the place to fill up. Buck and Barry, aristocrats, argued with dock workers from gift, while soldiers struggled with politicians. Daewoodians have never been known to turn down an argument. And what happened next? Some kids were coming from farms of the settlements too. This place got even more popular with the valiant sailors than the salty mast, and that's what uh, that's was the problem. No matter what the people say about fair maidenesses and civil debate, there is only so much people will tolerate. Arrow found himself in the wrong side of the argument with the wrong Thean. And when he disappeared a few days later, some said it was the work of that Thean. But Eon knew which way the winds was blowing. If you ask me, he skipped down, hid out somewhere, hoping for rational minds to prevail in Defiance Bay. If only he could see it now. Tell me about yourself, sir. Thanks, Bishop. Used to be a score of Barrett. Now I'll run the goose and fox and keep the regulars in line. What more is there to tell? So, how did you went from religion to taverns? The journey isn't as long as you'd think. I started with the Hollowborn, and with this, it was my sister's son. He takes a black bottle from under the bar and fills it with powder cup. <laughs> At the beginning of the legacy, I never expected there would be so many after him. Tragedy is part of the cycle, that's followed by rebirth, yet every year more parents were give grieving for their hollow-born children, and the gods were silent. So you lost your faith. Barrett promises rebirth, cycle, but the only cycle I found was this one. Have a drink, have another, and another, until I couldn't remember how I got home, woke up, come back. I finally woke up one day. To see my family had packed up and left, for I know they'd left days before and I just hadn't noticed, but they were gone, so I came here. I've cleared up since, not that I've found any answers, I've just stopped asking questions. Charming, let's see what you have for drinks. Oh, look at that, yellow lab. This small yellow dog seems... <laughs> Singularly happy to accompany you, panting merrily as it loves beside you. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna purchase that, why wouldn't I? It's a dog, 
it was a cat I won't even bother. Perception and resolve, intellect and lore. Lasts for two days. Dexterity, survival, defense when disengaging, athletics. Hmm. These are some pretty fancy rooms you have there, mate. Right. Okay, you can keep my spider for now. Why is he so green? No, I wish there was somewhere I can actually place him in my home. I mean, like a yard for pets. Look at this bird. Right, we're gonna walk with the dog for a while. Not a long time though, I still prefer to walk with the spider. It's, it's small and it doesn't get in the way. The Feasts of Fire. Lay in low. Not a lot of quests in this town, by the way. I shall be discreet. Gordy, over here, mister. A young boy watched the passer by and counts grimy handful of coins. His face and arms are smudged with dirt, but except of the grass stains, his clothing are in good condition. As I approached, he blinked and made a quick, furtive effort to pocket his coin. Hey, mister, want to know a secret? I know a real good secret. Looks like, looks like we've got a little hustler here. Someone raised this kid right. Hmm. And what is it that you know? He shrugged and claps his hand behind his back, kicking a loose bottle. I just saw a folk hiding some really neat things. I could show you where, but mom and dad told me not to talk to strangers. His eyes slowly rolled up at you. But maybe you could help me with something. Then, wouldn't be a stranger. Yeah, sure. The Crucible Knights have these daggers made out of March steel. It's the best steel around except for dog run steel. Which doesn't count because no one makes it anymore. He stopped long enough to catch his breath. Anyway, there is this merchant over by the expansion's house, and he has a dagger made of real March steel. He said he wouldn't sell it to me because I'm a kid, and kids don't know anything about daggers. But that's not true. I know a lot about daggers. I know about different kinds of steel. I know about the Crucible Knights. Make them in forges. I know the tip can pierce a low gauge scale armor, but one that um, that's good and sharp can cut through bone. See, I know plenty about daggers. And I really, really want this one. And if you could just get it for me, I promise I'll never ever ask anyone for anything ever again. Yeah, sure you won't. In Musuk, we begin training our daughters with hunting knives as soon as they can talk. Many can field dress and bear before their birthday. <laughs> I won't trust this kid with a butter knife. Sounds reasonable. I will get that knight for you. Gordy jumped up and down, whooping and hovering. I knew a real adventurer would understand. He pointed at the large building. There is a big merchant over the other end's town who sells weapons. He's the one with the dagger. I'll wait here. I'm on the trail. Skin flint.
I'll see what I can find. Now then. More lovely back then. What? This elderly man passes back and forth, talking short hobble on steps. His gaze is distant, and beneath it are dark rings of many restless nights. He appears to be having a conversation with someone who isn't there. And the way you fought, cutting down two at a time. We shared quite a victory, you and I. Watch where you're going, you babbling old fool. The man looked up at me, startled. My ho, oh, by the flame! For just a moment I thought I heard her. He puts her his hand on the chest, catching at his breath. What troubles you? Just memories of my youth, the Northland Rangers. Crowds of adventure from lifetime ago. Of late, the memories of lost battles and fallen friends has been especially vivid. Make it quick, old man, he sighs wearily. My Raven was slain along with the rest of the rangers by a necromancer called Halleck of Thayen. It's been almost sixty years, but suddenly the memories are as fresh and sharp as if they were yesterday, and the dreams. I know this sounds like an old man's madness, but I hear her, a voice just over my shoulder, calling to me in my dreams. At night, I see her wandering the catacombs between, beneath the cities, trying to escape. Foolish as it sounds, I can't shake the idea that she's somehow down there, waiting for me. I've even ventured below. The other damn near cost me my life. Where I have the warrior I was my youth. I'd scratch every grave in rat hole. As it is, I'm stuck with this feeble body, an agonizing notion that my love is somehow down there, beyond my help. You want me to chase a dream? It's more than that, I know it. My dreams were never more than faded memories, but this feels real and flesh and fr <coughs> fresh as the conversation we're having now. If it's payment you're concerned about, I still have plenty of weapons from my old adventuring days. They are all well made. They will serve you in the battlefield, or at least the merchant's style, as you choose. I will search catacombs for a site of Rohnia. There is an entrance just southwest of here, on the other side of the canal. You are truly a gift from the gods, if there is anything you can find it of her. I thought this conversation was going somewhere. Guess I was wrong. Houses we can enter. There's a lot of them. Yeah, I'm gonna take those lockpicks, thank you very much. Just a good armor for myself. Anyway, let's enter this house, see if there's anything in here we would want to do. Then we might actually enter this one. We'll save this for last. Vegetables, nice. And it's not stealing apparently. Because no one's in here. Old Hubrod. Keeping this book. Putting those things away. Some money and a scroll of regeneration. Oh right. This requires a key. We'll find one, no worries. Sagani, does your fox bite? Yes. Can I pet him anyway? It's your hand. I'm gonna pet him. <laughs> and I like Heather as well. Now. I mean, yeah, I like the sarcastic guy. 
kept following me around, pretending like he's useful and all. Addicts, mercenaries and addicts. Maybe we should kill them. Sveth. Sveth can be traced back to the previous of the Felian Republic, where the markets of plants in question enjoy rapidly rising demand. Most commonly chewed or inhaled, Sveth is infamous of the near catatonic state in which it often places its adherents. Those who use it claim that the drug gives them sense of urgency, and meaning lost when the effect fades. More colorful accounts claim that the drug allows one to look within themselves and witness the sight of their own soul. Yeah, sounds like someone who smokes a lot of that stuff would say. You can turn right back around. The lower floors are all yours, but nobody goes upstairs. Why not? Because you'll be brethren through new holes in your neck if you head up there. And why just mind your own business? Once you're on the surf, you're not going to much care about you anyway. Fine, I'll be gone. Burn sick. Good day, stranger. Well now. A new face. Welcome, friend. Name's Burnsick, and this, this is my humble ador, a place of business. And I do hope you're here to do some business. And what is your business exactly? If you have to ask, let's be clear, you go running to the guards and you're going to regret stepping foot in this place. In fact, I'd put even odds on your rattling every decision you made in your life. To leave your standing in front of me right now. What? But you stay smart, and I figure we can end up very good friends. You can ask me our previous customers. They'll vouch for me. <laughs> and my supply. I keep it simple. If you have the coin, I have the surf. If you're free to make use of the premises, as long as you don't uh, do anything stupid, you don't get tangled with the other customers. Now, what can I get you? I just came here to give you this. He, uh, he took the ring and turned around to his fingers. Nice! What is this for? Don't recognize the wedding band you gave Canera? Oh yes, I see. Now oh, she's making a statement, is she? Good prince to her. Sorry, I haven't spent coin to begin with. Is that all? Hmm. Seems a difficult thing to forget, giving your grandmother's ring to someone. Maybe she's just not worth remembering, eh? While you're playing club dog for her and all those, why don't you go back and tell her to keep clear of here? Hmm. You know, it seems to me like you are not the same Pernsick. How dare you hit your fiancé? How could you live with yourself? I don't know what I can. She uh, she was asking for it, sort of, like you right now. Maybe you ought to quit digging around at Paris and don't concern you. Me? I've got business to get back to. Doors that way. Something's not right here, and I'm not leaving until I find out what's going on. Then you won't be leaving at all, friend. I was tired of wearing this face anyhow. Guards, dwarves. Oh dear. Fox, take him. Hmm. Let's test this spell out, shall okay. we? Knock them down. Um, did he die before he casted the spell there? Oh, yeah. Not so powerful now, are you? Settle. 
These guys were not even worth my time. So here's a question for you. Stop! I give up. Just leave. Now go peacefully, alright? No. <laughs> he tried to kill me. Too little, too late. Nadir's Grimoire. You can have that. A fine robe. What do you actually do? Offering minimal protection, cloth armor consists of layers of wool and linen. Clothes, okay, I'm gonna take a look at that. Oh yeah, he looks ridiculous with that. Hey. Okay, everyone. Here's a new target practice. Right now. <laughs> Weren't you all foolish? I'll see what I. And what they don't know will not hurt them. Keeping an eye out. Well, at least we saw some action this episode. Only took us what, half an hour? Okay. Why don't we all stand here and send the dog in? A mercenary paladin. Everyone fire. Hey. No, no, just stay in the back and shoot him with arrows. Let's see if we can kill some. Actually, I want to use that once in a while. Might as well use that right now. Two grazes and two hits. Oh, we got all of them, right? That's a good dog. Wounding shot twice per encounter. You love this guy. Come, come, soft winds of death. Some fine weaponry you have there, mates. Rusty bronze key. I shall be discreet. It appears though someone rumpled through this uneven row of books in a hurry. These jars are chipped and cracked as if knocked to the ground and set back in place.
Why do you keep... Anyway... I love feeling powerful. One side of the overruled vase is buckled with crimson. Hmm. Someone has gathered sheets and towels into the makeshift bed and rumpled fabric is stiff with blood and washed sweat. Burn sink. A man lied bound to the bloody to, uh, and bloodied on the floor before me. His face was a tapestry of bruises and blood, was spattered across several corners of the room. The man crunched and sobbed as I approached. Please, no more. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here? The man pauses, gazing up at me. You're not... Oh, praise Barrett! You're not one of his men, are you? He glanced nervously behind me. I... Please, don't know how you are, who you are, but my name is Persik. This is my house. You have to help me. Then who was that downstairs? An imposter, some wizard named Nurit. He came into my house, tried me up and uh, tortured me. And now... Now he and his men are eating my food, breaking my things, selling stuff inside my house. He blinked. Whatever you're holding back, spit it out or I'll pray you out of you. Persek looked away, unable to meet my gaze. I may have hung out into a tiny portion of my supplier's share, but I needed that money. So you are a serf dealer. Look, I know it's not the best line of work, especially with all that happened, but all pays well, very, very well, and, well, people want the stuff, don't they? Hmm. But is it worth all this, losing Kandra? I... I have to... I'm sorry, I don't have any other trade, nothing that's going to support us. Someday I'll get out of business, when we don't need it anymore. And why should I help you? Because it's the right thing to do? Oh, sure, that will help. Look, Nadir took all my money, but I still has it. If you kill him, he's bound to have most of it on his person. You can have all of it. He's already dead. Oh, I can't believe this nightmare is finally over. You've no idea what you've done for me, but... He looked up at me. And away again. I need to find my love. Only after whatever Nedrit put her through, I'm afraid she won't give me a second chance to explain. But she might listen to you, please. She must be somewhere in Copperland. It's only home what she knows. And please don't tell her about the surf, about what I do. I could make it worth your while. A discount, maybe. Oh, wow. Perhaps you should trust her to make her own decisions, rather than lie to her. I know, and I can't force you to keep this secret, I just don't want to lose her. After what happened here, I'm sure she won't uh, have anything to do with Seraph or me if she finds out. Well, she is the one who sent me here in the first place. She did? That woman helped save my life without realizing it. Please, bring her home and tell her that everything's back to normal. I'll talk to her. Because I don't have any other choice. Actually, I don't know what was the other choice, I didn't read it. Okay, pup. Come along. Well, that was an easy quest. I'm so glad that I managed to murder some people. What happened to the addicts, I wonder? I should have killed them all. Oh well, live and kill. It's a new motto I have for myself. I'm not gonna lie to her, by the way. That's his problem.
What happened with Persik? Did you give him the ring? Hmm. Yeah, he has been impersonated by a powerful wizard. However, the real Persik also deals serve. Persik, my Persik is serve dealer? I didn't know for an honest man. Hmm. Damn it, how can I trust him after something like this? That he lied to me for this long. I should just be glad I found out about his before the wedding. Well, should I say you're smart to stay away from him? Or maybe I'm sorry it turned out like this. Oh, he still loves you. Do you really want to give up on your future together? Perhaps you're right. If he's willing to give it up, we can work this out. Seems worthwhile if you give him a chance anyway. Oh, and take this. Picked it up from uh, other merchants to help me stand firm in my decision. I'll be fine without it now. Unwavering Resolve. Ah, the Zarla Buddha. This gives you two intellect and one resolve. Well, sure. Young Talion Kiao and his father were ambushed by a Vanthra Quissel, oh, Wallace, on their way to Twin Elms, before the child even registered the strange arcrits, and their father thrust something into his hand and told him to run. As he turned to flee, the creatures uh, bl uh, blasted him with psionic energy. Talion's mind, viewed nearly overcome by the insidious power, suddenly was pulled back to the immediate surroundings, half springing, half stumbling away from the vet bag. His taken father, Talion, made it to the edge of town before he collapsed. The town guards were baffled as to how the child had withstood the attack. The item his father had given him was an old silver medallion. It was, ba uh, it was badly worn and missing the chains in the world. Do not yield, don't fear. Uh, do not wield to fear. Were barely visible upon its surface. As soon as he came of age, Talion joined the personal guard of a local tain. They, uh, when he did, he strung into a thin silver chain of commissioned a priest of sighted medallion with additional protective wards. Talion went missing years later, while was on the expedition to the White Marches. Ooh, we might actually meet this guy at some point. I stumbled all my words, by the way, while reading on this medallion's biography, so... We'll keep this. Scrolls and pets, that's all you have. I can actually give it to Ether. I, I actually know for a fact that he likes animals now. Right, what is this, by the way? Ah, Fireball. How much? 300, yeah. Okay, where should yes. I... Yes. Uh, which button was it? Alot Grimoire. Indeed. I don't remember where I clicked. All right. Yeah, whatever. Just um, here, have a hundred copper. It's nothing. There we go. Caster hand becomes solid cold. What does that do? Overwhelming anyone in the area of effect with brilliant and bewildering pyromantic display. 
decreasing their will and leaving them dazed. Okay, level 3 spells all around, that's good. And you leveled up. Let's take a look, shall we? Lore? Sure. Generates a rebounding wave of Fizenal's physical feedback between the Cypher and an army that causes crush damage to enemies caught in between. That summer really does fit her, doesn't it? Yeah, but I'm not gonna choose that right now, so I'm gonna end this episode. Thank you all for joining me, and I'm gonna see you all next time. Goodbye.